Let's get down to business. Thanks for coming out tonight. I wrote me a manual, a step by step booklet for you to get. Oh, I make money move. You can't see me. My time is now. now. What up, what up, what up, guys? Welcome back to the Fitness Times Business Podcast. My name is Joseph Medsell. I am your host. And guys, you're in a treat for this episode of Fitness Times Business. I am sitting across from WBFF Fitness Pro, owner of Phoebe Coaching, her own uh, coaching business. Massive Joe's sponsored athlete, of course, Phoebe Taylor. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome. Hey, welcome to uh, to your Fitness Times Business mm-hmm. podcast debut. Mm-hmm. Uh, the as I just mentioned, you guys, listeners, viewers, you're in abs for an absolute treat in this episode of Fitness Times Business. Phoebe has uh, an incredible story and uh, is one of the most unique people that I have met when it mm-hmm. comes to the psychological space, in particular. Uh, mindset, habits, routines, uh, mindfulness, um, you know, a lot of the things that I personally find quite interesting uh, and I'm sure that that you guys are going to find it quite interesting as well. Phoebe, before we get into it, Mm -hmm. I like to remind the listeners and the viewers why they're tuning in to the Fitness Times Business Podcast. I often forget to do it, but I'll, you know, when I remember, (laughs) I just, I just jump in. You guys are listening. You're tuning into this because you're trying to level up. Trying to level up in in fitness, in business, in your career, in your life in general, and you're seeking inspiration from people like yourself, Phoebe, Mm -hmm. uh, when we get into your story, and you're seeking practical advice as well. And this episode of Fitness Times Business, we're going to allow Phoebe to tell her story. I'm, you know, I want you guys to, to get her background in, in both the fitness realm and uh, the business and career realm. And then we're going to take a deep dive into some little bits and pieces that I think is going to add a whole bunch of value to you guys when it comes to the practical uh, advice that, you know, you may be struggling with making some difficult decisions or, you know, confronting some difficult situations. And I think that Phoebe has some, uh, not just some life experience, but some, some practical advice to help you along the way. Love it. Phoebe. Yo. Let us begin. All right. Let's do it. I think the best way to, uh, to, to, to contextualize everything we're going to talk about is mm-hmm. first and foremost, to give the listeners, to give the viewers your background, mm. you know, how you got to the level you're at now, obviously WBFF Fitness Pro uh, in the fitness realm mm-hmm. and then, you know, running your own successful coaching business, primarily online at the moment, but you do still do some physical coaching, mm-hmm. uh, you know, how you kind of got there. So I think, you know, let's start with your fitness journey. Mm-hmm. Um, let's peg it right back and, you know, let's, let's start at the grassroots level and then let's flip the switch and go to your business journey. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I'm going to, I'm going to drill down a little deeper and, and ask you the difficult questions. I love them. Let's go. Let's do it. So Beginning with fitness, okay. where did you, you know, where was the seed planted in your fitness journey? How did that all come come about? Would have been when I was, I think, around 15 years old. So I started training yeah. at EFM mm. and I started training with my dad and I was doing it. He uh, was recovering from some cancer, some health issues. And I, yeah, I wanted to jump in with him and it really helped our relationship at the time. Mm. And that's when I first saw that I could work hard towards something and better myself. So uh, that was a really uh, inspiring time for me. Um where, and I was seeing other people around me in, in the EFM, in the gym, uh, better themselves too. So that was yeah. where it first started. And that was, you know, a, a lot of people when they first are exposed to um, the, you know, the fitness lifestyle, maybe it's through a sporting background, perhaps it's like yourself, you mm-hmm. know, you just, you, for whatever reason, someone drags you along to the gym, mm-hmm. you start training, you know, what, what about it? you know, uh, did you initially click with what kind of piqued your interest, the physical progression, the psychological progression, you know, what was that initial, what, what, what was there there? Mm, That kind of, I think the driver was definitely physical. So I was really looking to, um, aesthetically, you know, um, 
uh, move and, and change and better my physique and my body at the time. Mm -hmm. As a young girl, I think, you know, we all, you know, me, my age then and the friendship group that I was in, you know, looking for the next diet or, or whatever it could have been back then. So knowing that I could go to the gym and um, lift weights and get strong was exciting for me. Um, and I noticed the, the physical change, which is good. But then I noticed the, the mental and the phys uh, psychological change, which um, was the aspect which I wasn't expecting. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm -hmm. And where do we go from there? Then we go to, well, I guess I kind of started growing up through the teens and, uh, you know, got into drinking and having fun and doing teenager things. All the teenager things. Yeah, all, this, <laughs> all getting into trouble and all that sort of stuff. Yep. And, um, yeah, I think through there I was definitely lacking skills education with mm -hmm. nutrition. Mm -hmm. uh, I stopped training um, after I left school. And and from there, I actually was doing um, exercise videos in my lounge room because I was too nervous to go to the gym. Yeah, I knew I really wanted to move and exercise and train, but I didn't know how to do it. Um, mm -hmm. I was too self-conscious yeah, to go to a gym. So I'd do like, you know, those crazy DVDs in my lounge room and eat a vegan diet, no protein, just plants pretty much and just try to... Um, you know, limit calories throughout the week. And then on the weekend, you splurge. know, you splurge, get yeah. crazy drinking, all that sort of yeah. stuff. That was my life for, for quite a few years mm -hmm. uh, until I um, started going to the gym with my partner at the time and he introduced me to weights. Now, before then, I really did believe that weights training would make women bulky and I really wanted to steer away from it because mm -hmm. uh, I didn't want to look like that typical perceived idea of what, uh, you know, a woman looked like when they were waist training, yeah. big and muscly and scary. Uh, and so, yeah, started there. And that's when I first did my first competition, which was leading up into that. Okay. So mm. tell, the, the, t let's talk a little bit about that because you didn't just, you know, get, you know, back into the gym and then just immediately decide to compete, right? You had no, a little bit of help. You mm. joined a, joined a, a team pretty much at that point. I did. I joined a team. So the team idea for me was uh, I wanted to do the photo shoot at the end of about 12 weeks. So okay. uh, in, in the team of, of women, uh, they were all going to be competing at the end of this journey. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted a taste of what it was like to follow a structured training and nutrition program because mm -hmm. it was really new for me. And uh, I really wanted some guidance and to learn. I remember you saying a lot to, to the coach. I just want to learn. I want to learn. Uh, and I did, I learned a lot. And, um, you know, f about a month before the 12 weeks was finished, I decided, no, nope, I'm going to compete. I'll jump up. I've been doing all this work for this amount of time. May as well give my best. Yeah. So that's when I decided about a month before I was going to do the WNBF mm -hmm. and, um, I competed and I won and that really sparked my fire, my interest in where I could go in the industry. Okay. And that was that first competition. That was 2013. That's it. WNBF. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that was bikini. That's right. First time competitor, mm -hmm. stepped up on stage, yeah. took out the title. Yeah. <laughs> good yeah, <it> start. Good. <laughs> it's a good start. Yeah, it was now, awesome. if I'm not mistaken, at this around about this time, mm. you started to take an interest in the mindset and the psychology you know, mm. behind competing, really. This is when you met your first life coach, shall That's we call it. her? Yeah. yeah. So about a month before I, yeah, jumped up on stage and when I really decided, hey, I'm going to do this, yeah. I, I was being coached at the time with it with a, I guess you'd call her a, a spiritual coach or a, a mindset coach, mm -hmm. a, a life coach. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, a chick I met at the gym, her name's Sophia. Yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure you know her. Yeah. Um, a lot of people in the industry do. She's just the best. And, um, you know, and she, she taught me a lot and she still teaches me a lot cause I'm still working with her. I'm good friends with her now. Yeah. And so she, she told me, she's like, so you, you want to do well with this, right? You want to win, right? Cool. If you want to win, you got to meditate. And, um, I was just like, okay, I don't, I don't really understand the relevance. Um, why meditation was so important for me to achieve a goal, Yeah. but I did it. I, I, you know, like I, like I do, I, I, committed and I committed a hundred percent and I did the meditation it was an hour and a half or an hour and 20 minutes every day. Mm -hmm. And I probably meditated terribly, even though I know you can't <laughs> meditate terribly, but a lot, often and often enough, I found myself like thinking during the meditations, like this is super weird. Mm. But through that experience, I started uh, visualizing and yeah. I started getting a sense of what it could have could be like if I was to actually achieve my goal and what if I could, and that curiosity started to move within me. So, mm. uh, I started to really surrender to the process of meditation and just allow myself to bask in it, which is what I did. And I, and I really do put it down to the fact that, um, meditation and working with my coach at the time really helped my success because on stage I was able to, I, I lived it already. Like I'd seen it so many times in my mind. Yeah. Um, I felt 
of course, I was still nervous being on stage. You are going to be the first time, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, I also felt at ease because I'd seen it in my mind so much. Mm -hmm. Mm. So you win, you, you win this first competition. You've got, you know, the, the psychology stuff, the seeds been planted. You're mm. starting to investigate that. Then what happens? What's the next step in your, in your competitive fitness journey? Mm. Uh, so after that first show, I was hooked. I was like, cool, this is awesome. I've got to do this again. Yeah. And I know that where I can do it better. I know I've got to have some time where I'm going to grow some muscle. Mm. So I yeah started with a new coach, was, you know, going through some growing phases where I'd, you know, eat more food. And around that time was a really good time for me to see that food isn't scary, you know, mm. that we've got to have carbs, we've got to have enough protein um, to have rest days, like to, you know, to to do the process properly, which is what I really did and I committed to. And so because of that, I feel like I put on some muscle between that time. Then I competed again in the WFF mm -hmm. in the state show and then also the WBFF in Sydney. And that was about a year later, right? That was yeah. two, 2014? That's it. And how did you mm -hmm. go on those shows? Yeah, so the WFF, which was in Adelaide, I won the the fitness round and then I won the state t title for that one. Yeah. And then I went over to WBFF, which was the first WBFF show, WBFF show yeah. in Australia, and uh, I came third in bikini. Mm -hmm. Yes, so mm -hmm. it was pretty cool and a huge lineup of women. Um, it was just really great to, to be there, but I learned through that process process that I was definitely not a bikini athlete, that yeah. I was fitness definitely. And uh, I had the muscle there. So mm -hmm. to, to really put my foot down with my training and succeed in fitness. Mm -hmm. And then you, I'll let you tell the story. What mm -hmm. happens at that point? Mm, okay. After that shows. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. that was a really hard time for me. So, uh, you know, learning about, uh, you know, reverse dieting. I mean, it wasn't really spoken about back then for me. I didn't really yeah. know what a reverse diet was. Mm. Um, you know, my coach at the time was amazing and supported me in the best way that he could. Um, but I think I didn't really even know what to do. I think I just thought after that time, okay, cool. What's the next show? Yeah. And I realized at that time I couldn't do anymore because my body was so tired, you yeah. know, and I had a lot of problems with my hormones and um, my PCOS as well. I'm sure a lot of women out there have struggled with that as well. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, they know the symptoms associated with that. So, you know, I lost my cycle for a really long time. Our thyroid was, um, you know, I had a lot of problems and I was extremely tired, had a chronic fatigue. And, um, you know, I think back then comp prep and post comp wasn't spoken about. Yeah. So I guess stayed pretty silent and I was like, cool, well, I'm just going to, you know, just get on with it the best I can. And I just, you know, focused on healing and my health and my work, which was my personal training business. Yeah. Uh, and just try to, you know, commit my energy to that rather mm. than so focused on my aesthetics. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And you did some more exploration in this point with mindset and psychology as well, if I'm not mistaken, right? Mm. That was kind of, you You know, you continued down that path mm -hmm. at the same time trying to, you know, deal with a lot of the, the issues of, you know, post-comp. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in detail. Mm. You give it a couple of years, mm. 2016, you come back to competing, you're healthy enough to compete. You actually head over to the IFBB mm -hmm, in 2016. Yeah. And um, what happened there? How did that come about? Uh, I really presumed that my physique um, would be in line with the IFBB bikini, um, mm. you know, uh, criteria. Yeah. Uh, and it was a really good experience for me. It was actually a really hard prep and I made it hard myself. You know, I, I mm -hmm. didn't implement the things I did initially, which was my mindset work. Yeah. I really wasn't committed to the process of visualization and goal setting. And I didn't enjoy the journey. I found it really hard. Mm -hmm. It was a tough slog and, um, you know, lots of cardio. It was just a different prep and I don't regret any of my preps. I've learned so much from them. And, you know, even through the hardest times I've come out of them, it's a good learning experience for mm -hmm. me. Um, and, and sh it showed my resilience. Like I've got through a lot and, um, you know, how, how amazing is that? But it's also kind of not amazing. Like it's, it's a pro and a con, right? Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah. So did IFBB, I didn't place, was not lean enough, too much muscle. Like I'm just too big for bikini. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's a, that's a good thing. I mean, I can see the really positives in that, you know, so I knew that I was suited to a different federation. Yeah. Yeah. And then you go and you take some more time off, mm -hmm. 2016, 
come back in 2019, mm -hmm. so three years, three years off. And in that time, once again, working on the psychology, working on your physique a lot as well, because that was really the point. Mm -hmm. 2016 IFBB bikini, where you were like, you know, I, I'm, I just, I don't fit the criteria. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you'd done bikini up until that point. You did do a fitness show, but it had mainly been bikini up until that point, and you were like, my physique is more suited to a different look, a different criteria. Mm. So you take that time, you continue to kind of build the physique, sculpt the physique, work on the mindset, sculpt the mindset. You come back in 2019, mm -hmm. WBFF once again, mm -hmm. yep. fitness, and how'd that go for you? Amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. It was the best experience. Yeah. It was my favorite experience of all time. I mean, I, yeah, like I, really worked so hard on my mindset throughout this whole experience and I just I just saw it from mm -hmm. when I decided. And it was about a year's prep um, for me because I knew that that was going to be the goal. Um, and I was just really enjoying my journey of incorporating these healthy habits that I've honed in over the years and, yeah. you know, trying to remain as centred as I could. And um, it, was, it was a blast. It was mm. The whole day was awesome. The whole prep was amazing. Um, and I came out of the other end of it in pretty good shape, in pretty good my, – my mind was good. You know, I haven't really had the post-comp – I think we all kind of do a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah, but a it's little bit. not like the real crash and burn like that yeah. I was used to prior. So, yeah. Mm. Really Phoebe, but you're forgetting something though. Am I? You won the show. <laughs> I won the show. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. earned your pro status. Mm. It was, you know, you 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 pretty much won everything you could win in the WBFF amateur fitness division mm. at that particular show. Yeah. Uh, you know, and um, a culmination really of you know your first show in 2013. Mm. Up into that point, it was a, a, a six year journey really of kind of yeah. you know trying different federations trying different, uh, you know, different looks for your physique, mm. working on your mindset, working on your, your physical recovery, coming out of prep, trying mm. different prep techniques. There was a lot of work that went into that. I didn't even think about that really. It's yeah. Like six that's years. why I'm yeah. telling you, right? So, and then it all kind of culminates <laughs> mm. and, uh, you know, culminates in you, you win in the Australian title, winning your pro card and, mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, to now where you are, WBFF pro, um, getting ready to make your pro debut, that's uh, it. at the Australian Pro am. Mm -hmm. right. Twenty weeks. Yeah. So there you go. So that's fitness. So mm -hmm. let's just let's let's just capture all that <laughs> and let's put that aside. Mm -hmm. And now I wanna dive a little deeper into your career, your business journey. How did you get from mm -hmm. You know, let's go to your kind of teenage years once again. Let's start about the same to where you are now. You run your own business, um, online coaching business. You do physical coaching as well. You're, mm -hmm. you know, you're looking to take your your, your business really, um, you know, to the next level at the moment as well. Yeah. How did you kind of get to that level in the in the in the career realm? Yeah. So, well, you know, I first started when I was in the gym, I guess. Um, where am I trying to think? I'm just trying to think where I first started. Damn. Well, obviously I started personal training. Yeah. I won my first show in 16, 2016. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what do I do with my life? I don't really know where I'm going. Cause prior to then I really wanted to be an artist and I studied at university. So I started, studied visual arts. Yeah. I wanted to be like a famous glass blower in my head. That was, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, and you know, I, I really love creativity and I think that through bodybuilding, that's probably my creativity and my outlet now where 100%. I can be creative. Yeah. Yeah. And so I guess through there, you know, my partner was like, you know what, you should jump into personal training. Mm. And uh, I had a lot of fear around that because I was like, well, who am I? How can I, how can I help people? And um, I realized that I had a lot to offer because I could help women who were in my, my space. Like, you know, a couple of years ago before then mm -hmm. I was doing bloody exercise DVDs at home because I didn't have the confidence. So how cool would it be if I could help women and men, you know, bring them into the gym and show them it's not that scary and help them, um, for their, for their life, for their, for their health. Yeah. So that really motivated me and inspired me, um, to help others. And so from there, yeah, I was at uh, Anytime Fitness for a few years, um, as a personal trainer. Mm -hmm. And then I started getting some messages from online, from Instagram, from people, um, interstate who mm -hmm. wanted to work with me. And, um, at that time there was no real, um, online, coaching help. Like I didn't really know how, how to do this whole thing, yeah. uh, how to help people online. So I just did my best with what I could. I'm um, helping them with training programs and lifestyle programs, just really cautious about, uh, you know, nutrition and what I provided them. I didn't give them any amounts. So I was just really, you know, vague, but I really wanted to help people with their habits because 
to me at that stage, I realised that it's the habit formation that comes first and foremost. Because if, you know, you're not getting up properly or in the right mind space or if you're, you know, if you're eating absolute garbage macros every single day, you know, if you've got no awareness of macronutrients or, or caloric amounts, um, that's the first step. So it's like kind of like looking at the macro range and yeah. just helping them first with the, with the small steps, mm-hmm. um, which is what I really like to do. Because I find, you know, I found back then those small tweaks would help people a lot. Yeah. And so small things like get to bed earlier, you know, drink enough water, looking after your body, getting like, you know, five to six serves of veggies a day, like mm. the basics, you know, but people don't know that. So, well, some people don't. Um, and then, yeah. It's interesting that, um, you know, you, you mentioned that you did your first show in 2013 mm. and that was kind of, I guess, the catalyst for getting into personal training. Mm. You know, what we tend to see a lot is that, um, you know, athletes will do, will, will compete for the first time and then go and become a comp coach. Mm. Um, but you, you went in a different direction though. You, 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 mm. I mean, still today you don't even, you don't do competition coaching. It's, it's yeah. not you know, it's not something you're interested in doing. You went down the path of, you know, this is my kind of experience. These are the Mm. kind of challenges that I had and it resulted in me competing. Mm. But those sorts of challenges are, you know, quite common for for females in particular, guys as well, who are perhaps new to the the fitness lifestyle. Mm. And, you know, you, I guess you kind of saw that opportunity to, to add value and, mm. and started from there. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I, I love competing. Mm-hmm. I love it. And I think I, I know other people that love it too. And that's so great. But I think uh, for me, my passion lies with just helping individuals to feel their best and feel yeah. healthy and, and to learn the skills yeah. they need for the rest of their life. You mm-hmm. know, and I've, I view, you know, competing as, as the next, next, next level. And I think once someone's got all those bases covered, cool, like go compete. Um, and I've got the people that I can, um, that I can tell them to go and talk to and to coach them to, the, to that space. But, um, it's really not my passion. And I, I love people feeling their best and optimal all the time and yeah. learning, you know, and, and mm-hmm. understanding their self a little bit better rather than, you know, a, a 12 week competition preparation where they might feel a bit miserable towards the end of it because they're not in their ideal space of whatever they believe is perfect because yeah. we just can't remain there. Right. So, mm. yeah. So you go, you start your personal training, physical personal training, mm. 2013, you do that for about three years and then you start kind of moving more towards online. And that's, at, at, that's a, a similar time because that's like 2016 now, right? Mm-hmm. That's a similar time to when you did the IFBB show mm-hmm. in bikini and then you had all of the, mm-hmm. you know, the, 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 I guess, issues post comp with that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you, you even experienced some chronic fatigue syndrome at that point, right? A so yeah. it was, you know, I guess on one hand, you're kind of battling that physically Mm. which doesn't really suit, you know, working 10, 12 hour days, personal training people in the gym. Mm -mm. You've seen this opportunity to kind of move your business more online, which, you know, allows you to kind of deal with your physical health at the same point in time. And it just so happens that, you know, that ends up being where you move your business pretty much entirely now, right? Like most of your, most of Phoebe coaching, Mm -hmm. your business is, is online coaching. Yeah. I love it online. It's, it's, it's a great, um, opportunity yeah. and I can work with more people, you know, yeah. I, and, um, but yeah, I mean, like I think after my IFBB show, I definitely was burnt out and I did that, that show that I did, I just, I know I probably shouldn't have competed because I was just, it was just pushing the candle. It was just burning the candle both ends. That's yeah. what I'm looking for. Yeah. <laughs> pushing the candle and burn yeah. the candle. Yeah. It was, uh, it was tough. So from that, I was like, cool, I need to work in a different capacity. I need to be mm-hmm. online. I can't be at the gym all day, every day standing up and I need to look after myself and care for myself. So, um, that's what I did. And I I learned a lot from that experience. And I think, you know, realizing, recognizing that it it takes a while to heal after a competition. Um, you know, even if you've done it really well and you reverse really well, you know, you're still battling those uh, hunger hormones Mm. and, um, you know, possible hormonal shifts that you're going to go through. So really awesome learning experience. But from that, I realized that I really wanted to work online. I love working one-on-one. I absolutely love it. Mm -hmm. But uh, online, I feel like, again, I can just broaden my audience and I can reach more people and help more people, which is my goal. Yeah. 100%. Hundred mm. percent. So that that kind of you know is a little bit of an introduction to you know where your journey thus far in the fitness space, the the um, the business space, and kind of mm. you know how you got to being WBFF Fitness Pro, running Phoebe yeah. Coaching, and you know the person you are today. There's a couple of things that you know I really want to 
try and extract out of you because I know that it's going to bring a lot of value to the listeners. Mm -hmm. The first one I want to start with is going to appeal uh, particularly to our, to our female listeners, because you have, um, you know, you're, you're, you're very influential in the online space and, you know, it's no surprise. It's accumulation of, you know, seven plus years now of being in the fitness space of building Mm -hmm. your business, of competing and getting to the level that you've gotten to your influence though, is, significantly different to other women who are in a similar position to you. You Mm. know, they might be a pro athlete in the WBFF or the IFUB or any other federation. Mm. They might run a coaching business, probably a comp coaching business. Your, I guess, um, philosophy about how you want to use your influence and how you want to influence people and how you want to be seen by other women Mm -hmm. um, is quite unique. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I really have no interest or desire to... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Okay. I don't like pedestaling. I don't like being put on one. I don't like Mm -hmm. people viewing me as better or, you know, because I've achieved something. It's just like, well, I just think everyone can achieve what I've achieved. You just got to do the work. Mm -hmm. So what I'm really not interested in is being a sex symbol or, um, you know, I want my clients and women online to look at my photos and to feel like, um, not threatened, yeah. not less than, um, not worthy of. Like you can do anything you want. Like, you know, put enough makeup on anyone and lose some body fat. Like you can do exactly what I've done too, you know. Like mm. I think it's all possible. And the thing I don't like is the comparison. So I see a lot of my clients, they send me lots of images of girls they look up to and they aspire to be like online. I think that's great, but um, they're pedestaling them and they're comparing themselves and they're feeling less than. And I don't like that because it makes us feel – makes them feel – you know, it, it pedestals, you know, I mm-hmm. think we can admire and we can admire f- someone for what they've done. I think it's a big difference between admire and um, what's the word I'm looking for? Just that comparison, you know, I think, and it's a, it's a, it's a slippery slope to feeling pretty miserable. Like you've got no self-worth. So yeah. what I really, my philosophy, I guess, I don't really think, I don't really thought about it, but you know, I just want my clients to feel comfortable with their boyfriend seeing photos of me. I want my clients to feel comfortable and safe with me. Like they can relate to me because Mm -hmm. I'm just like a sister to them. Mm -hmm. Like I'm just like everyone else. And um, that's why I love working with women and younger women. I'm working with some 15 year olds now and I'm really honored to work with them because I think I would have loved to have worked with someone at that age to really help my mindset, understand nutrition, but also to understand that I can do anything I want if I put my mind to it. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. And I think that you, you know, the, through, uh, you know, through the content that you produce as well, I think so much of it is, um, you know, so valuable in the fact that people who consume it are able to take so much out of it that they can apply mm. themselves. This podcast is a great example, right? It's not, not, it's not, it's not just like you're kind of posting and we see this, you know, it's unfortunate, but it's just, it's almost like it's threaded into the fabric of the industry, especially with, you know, a lot of the top female athletes. A lot of the content they post is kind of look at me type content. Mm. You know, it's kind of, you know, look at my physique, look at, you know, it's it's exactly like you put it, pedestaling 100%. Mm. Whereas, you know, you can just see it through everything that you do. It's about, you know, how can I help you if you've chosen to invest your time in Mm. consuming a piece of content that I've created, whether it's, you know, something like an Instagram story, whether it's, you know, a piece of content on your website, whatever it is, how can I repay that time investment Mm. as best I can? And I think that you do it probably better than anyone that I've seen um, in the industry. Uh, and, and, uh, it's, it's very impressive. Thank you. Yeah. That's really nice. I want to talk about, you know, one of the things that, that really, from my perspective, um, I see really sets you apart as, uh, you know, not just as a pro athlete and not just as a a coach, um, in the coaching business that you're in, but as a person as well, is you have incredible emotional intelligence. Um, and just your, your, your awareness of mindset. And I think your awareness of how important our thoughts are 
And, you know, you kind of touched on it a little bit when you, you spoke about you started working with your coach in 2012 and you started working on the meditations and the visualizations mm -hmm. and, you know, all that, all, all, all that sort of psychological exercise, for lack of a better term, in mm -hmm. combination with the physical exercise, really kind of started building the person that you are today. Yeah. Talk to me a little bit, I think probably first and foremost, where did that interest come from where do, what, what kind of sparked that you know there's got to be more there's there's more to this than just you know going to the gym lifting weights stepping on stage because that's really where it, where you know where it began for you yeah. what what sparked that well i think you know growing up like a lot of us having horrible anxiety like crippling depression thinking there's something wrong with us mm -hmm. like think, you know i think i was very inward and i think we all are in our early ages and thinking there's something wrong with us it's just mm -hmm. kind of going through those uncomfortable growing phases as we're younger right um but from a really young age I really wanted my idea of was just fixing myself, you know? Yeah. So, you know, I would do the psychology and, and counselors and all that sort of stuff when I was younger. Um, and then, you know, I, I didn't really find a lot of benefit through those experiences because I found by me repeating my problem over and over again, for me personally, didn't really help me grow. What I was really interested in was learning a better way and a different way of thinking. So when I first got my first coach uh, around that time sp and space when I was doing my first show, yeah. uh, I realized that I could actually take responsibility for my own thinking mm -hmm. and I could actually pick up and I could become aware and I could strengthen my awareness to maybe think another way or I could pick up on thoughts which I know weren't mine so realizing that thoughts are just that they're not really me mm. so I could actually get better and more skillful at picking them up so it's kind of like waist training you know you just get better at um my muscle connections I'm getting better at my awareness connection I guess mm. and so you know starting off I was terrible at it and I think I still am but you know I think that's the thing with with any skill you just kind of keep getting better and better and um I mean, I still catch myself out now and I'm like, man, I'm in that thought and I'm there and I'm so present and I'm believing the thought yeah. and I and I have to, you know, and I think you just get better at pulling yourself out of it and mm -hmm. snapping out and being like, bro, like fucking wake up. Um, and so, yeah, that was my first thing, which I think stirred interest in me that I could actually create my own life. So, yeah. Yeah. How do you go, you know, because I, I, I know that a lot of people kind of struggle with this, right, is, is you know, you have a thought mm. and the thought may be, you know, a negative thought. I, 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 I call them ants, mm -hmm. automatic negative thoughts that steal your happiness. Yep. Uh, and it pops into your head and sometimes you don't even know where it's come from. Uh, but it's, you know, it's something that is abrasive to something that you're trying to achieve or, you know, abrasive to the person you're trying to become or the person you wish you were. Uh, what's the process to, I guess the first step really is, is what's the process to being able to separate yourself mm -hmm. from that thought mm -hmm. and just looking at it, at, looking at it for what it is. It's just a thought. How do you, how do you do that? Man, it's really hard and I'm still working at it. I mean, yeah. I think it's something we do until the day we die. Mm -hmm. um, but I was listening to a really great podcast the other day, actually from Tara Brock. And she mentioned uh, this concept, the uh, the hungry ghost. Yeah. And it can be related to any addiction or any addictive thought pattern, which could be to do with nutrition or lack of drive or perfectionism or control, uh, where we strengthen that awareness to the ant or the hungry ghost, mm -hmm. which is there. And it's trying to pull us back to homeostasis to remain the same because it's really comfortable there. It's and cozy, you know, it's that comfort zone. So, um, and, and there's a lot of benefit there. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's, it's, there's lots of different skills I picked up over the years when it comes to myself, personal development, yeah. and then I work with clients. So something that I do actually is I give some of my clients um, homework tasks often, and uh, I'll ask them to do certain journaling techniques or tasks. And one thing that I work with, with a lot of my clients actually is a, um, it's a task that I get them to, especially when it comes to over, overeating or compulsion, when it comes to um, perhaps even not like um, alcohol or overeating or um, obsessive thoughts about anything at all. Yeah. It's about understanding what you were thinking about at that moment. So it's kind of like CBD, but it's kind of like my own version of it. Um, cognitive behavioral therapy, but it's like Phoebe style. Um, <laughs> and uh, I guess things way cooler. Yeah. And, you know, every thought that we have, is triggered because of something else. So, um, and then it's like kind of looped. So I don't know, I've, I've got some awareness tools that I do use, but again, it just takes practice. Like you've yeah. just got to, you've got to practice it and, and you've got to be aware that 
that like it's never going to freaking end. You just get better at picking it up. You mm-hmm. get better at calling bullshit. So, you know, when I have certain thoughts now, I'm like, bullshit. I hope I can swear. Sorry. Yeah, of course you can swear. <laughs> my my rainbow language is coming out. <laughs> um, but, you know, you have to call bullshit and I think, and then reframing them. So, yeah, lots of different techniques that I've used over the years. Kind of hard to say one, but I think recognizing that we're human. Mm. They're meant to be there. Like, they, you know, we're always going to have them. You just get better at picking them up. And that's the journey of fucking life. I think, I, I think <laughs> it's, it's such an important thing that, you know, um, the, 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 the three biggest reasons that I have seen mm. that prevent people from, um, achieving success or making difficult decisions or, you know, ultimately becoming who they really want to become. The first one is the fear of failure. Mm. The second one is self doubt. And the third one is fear of other people's opinions. All three of those things are 100% thoughts. 100%. The fear fear is an emotion Mm. that manifests in your own mind based on all of the shit that can go wrong. Mm -hmm. Self-doubt is negative self-talk. Fear of other people's opinions is complete bullshit. Once again, it's a fear that is a manifestation of your own mind. And I think that... You know, the the sorts of things that you teach in your business and obviously the sorts of things that you've been practicing for the for the better part of seven years, uh, you know, being able to stand away from your thoughts and look at them almost as if, you know, they're they're you know, a third party, you know, they're yeah. never actually part of you, is just to look at them for what they are, sit with the thought, and then be able to, you know, uh, I guess really transform the thought, you know, mm. transform the thought from, from an ant or to make a negative thought to something that is conducive to the situation or the goal or whatever it is that you're trying to achieve yeah. is so important. Something else that you mentioned um, as part of your fitness journey was visualization. Mm. This is something, you know, I was talking, we were talking off camera um, just before. This is something that I have noticed p- the, Particularly consistent, almost, you know, a hundred percent unanimously consistent Mm -hmm. across all of the top athletes that I have had the privilege of, of, um, spending time with is, and sometimes I don't even know that they're doing it, but Mm -hmm. is this ability to visualize this ability to, you know, in the competitive space, not just see what it looks like to win the fitness title and earn your WBFF pro card, not just to get to that point, not just to, um, you know, uh, plant yourself in that space and that particular time, but to get to the point where the visualization is so strong that you actually feel it. You can actually, you actually experience the emotions associated with achieving that particular goal. Mm-hmm. Talk to me a little bit about that and how, mm-hmm. how that has kind of played out in your life thus far. Yeah. In my first year of the coaching. So, you know, before I did compete that first time, I was actually doing some scripting, which I didn't even know was called scripting back then, but yeah. I, to me, it just made sense that I would script my day. Mm. And so what I would do is I would take some time every month or so, and I would re-script. So the script would look like this. It would look, it'd be very, very, so much attention to detail was crazy. So, yeah. you know, I'll, I'll write it all out and then I'll actually record myself on my phone and I would listen to it every night and every morning or even as I was driving and I would just see my day and I'd see how it went and I'd see how the months progressed and I'd see how uh, in my mind um, how the, the competition day went mm-hmm. and what it would feel like to like slide the bikini on? What would it feel like to put my shoes on? Mm. How do I feel when I wake up in the morning? What does it feel like when my feet touch the floor? How does it feel when I go into the shower and I can feel, you know, the water on my back? What does it feel like when I look in the mirror and I see myself and I'm really happy with what I see? How do I feel emotionally when I look on the scales and I can see a number which represents where I need to be? So Mm. emotionally bringing those feelings up rather than just seeing it in my mind, I need to really embody the feeling. So it's something I still do now. Um, with clients, I do some scripting as well. Uh, and, you know, it, I, I believe scripting is very, very important and then just re-listening to it. So um, subconscious mind can listen to it, even in the background, even if it's, as you're just driving along, you're still listening to 
this um, this this day, this day which is happening right now, mm. or, or even in the future. So mm. I think yeah, scripting is really important, and it's something that anyone can do. Just spend some time writing out what you want in detail, like mm. so much detail, and then feel it. So. Um, kind of coming back to a lot of the journaling techniques people do now when it comes to gratitude, um, you know, really embodying that feeling of gratitude. But what else can you attach to it visually to mm. make it real so you're, you know, you're bringing it to you? And I guess when you have the day and when you experience it, like my last show for the WBFF when I won it, I just had a freaking blast because I just knew that I'd have a blast. I was mm. just so happy to be there mm. But because I'd felt and I'd experienced all those feelings months before. Yeah. I knew how I'd feel. Mm. So I wasn't nervous. I was just like freaking wrapped. And this is the thing with, um, you know, like w what you're describing through, um, through that technique is, I guess it's kind of a, a version of positive affirmations, mm. right? But, but really what it is at its core is replacing negative emotions with positive emotions. Mm. That's really what it is. And this is what, you know, when I, when I, um, talk about goal setting in particular, you know, one of my big things are setting smart goals, you know, and the S yeah. in smart stands for specific. Mm. You need to get really detailed with what you're trying to achieve when you want to achieve it by mm. like, it needs to be, it needs to be so, it needs to be down to every minor little detail. And I think that the same principle applies when it comes to visualization, because what you're trying to do is you're trying to attach the positive emotional response totally to the visualization as well. Mm -hmm. So you need to get to a point where your visualization is so detailed. Like you mentioned, you, you know what it feels like mm -hmm. to, you know, have that shower. You mm -hmm. know what it feels like when the, the water drops hit your skin. Mm -hmm. You understand, like, you know, exactly what the, um, what the positive emotion attached to that visualization feels like. Mm -hmm. And the only way you can get there is to really dial down on those details and and just everything needs to be just perfectly exactly how you visualize it to be yeah it's it's uh, yeah it's mm -hmm. incredible i want to something else that you're really big on um you know in addition to to the, the the emotional intelligence of stepping back from your thoughts um you know this technique of visualization positive affirmations uh, what you do with habits mm. and what you do with routines. And you talk about habit stacking. Mm. And I think that um, one of the things that I see people struggle a lot with is they set a particular goal or, you know, they want to achieve a certain outcome in fitness or their career or their business or their personal relationship, family life, whatever it is. Mm. And they're able to understand that the certain habits and the certain routines that they currently have and they currently practice mm. don't align with them achieving that particular outcome. But they really struggle with getting out of those, let's call them quote unquote, bad habits, bad routines, because they're not aligned with the goal and replacing them with quote unquote, good habits and good routines. Yeah. How do you do that? What's your, what's your kind of take on this habit stacking mm. or the replacement of, of bad with good? Yeah. So if you haven't read the book yet, um, Tiny Habits, I think it's Tiny Habits from James Clear. Mm -hmm. Oh, is it Tiny Habits? Atomic Habits. Atomic that's it. Habits. Yeah. yeah. So that's the, the strategy from, from, uh, from James. So you know, habit stacking. And it's really where I start a lot of my gem pop clients that are just starting out that, you know, perhaps are coming from a life of eating lots of fast food, not training, not moving, you know, feeling pretty miserable or whatever it is. They're in a bit of a space. So we need to really slowly bring them back to a different space. And that you know, habit stacking is really good. So, for example, it could be, okay, wake up in the morning. As soon as you wake up, go for a five-minute walk yeah. uh, every single day. And then um, while they're doing that walk, maybe they could be saying their affirmations. So that's a habit stack. So, you know, for example, one week, five-minute walk. Next week, affirmations on top of that. Mm -hmm. Then we can stretch out the goal and say, okay, 10-minute walk. And then, you know, after your affirmations, you can do some gratitude journaling or something like that as you're on your walk. So yeah. making things really slowly implemented as um, as the journey goes on and then making tweaks along the way. Mm. Mm. I think that the, the trap that a lot of people fall into is um, they try and they don't, they don't really practice this stacking, right? They just mm -hmm. want to take all of the bad habits and all of the bad routines and stop them mm -hmm. and then just automatically flip the switch 
and do all the good habits and all the good routines. It's never going to end well. <laughs> it never <laughs> ends well, right? No way. Because it's it's you know you a lot of these habits and routines, and you would see it with your you, you, your gem pop clients in particular, mm-hmm. have been ingrained. Not over weeks, not over months, not over years, but for a lot of them, like decades. Totally. Like you've been you've been doing the same shit mm-hmm. for ten years, twenty years, whatever it is. That's how you got to this situation. Yeah. You've now identified that you don't like the situation. You want to move and become better and level up in whatever area of your life. Mm-hmm. You can't just flick the switch and mm-hmm. expect ten years of ingrained habits and routines to automatically switch off and mm. switch on good habits and routines that support this outcome that you've decided you wanted to achieve. Yeah. This um, concept that you talk of, of, you know, of habit stacking is mm. it's effectively like small little changes, right? Yeah. It's yeah. like, okay, well let's just focus on one habit that you've, that that's ingrained mm. that doesn't support this goal you're trying to achieve. And let's figure out day by day how we can start to move it towards yeah. a good habit. Yeah. And this is one thing that, you know, the, the advice that I give a lot of people is you can't just turn a bad habit off. Mm-hmm. You can't just turn a bad routine off. It needs to be replaced with something else. Mm. So if you want to replace it with something good, it's a process over time. That starts with these little small changes, yeah. these little small stacks. Yeah, and, and just being really freaking patient and also yeah. just having a lot of empathy for yourself and just being gentle. Yeah. I think like, you know, talking to someone who has years of conditioning, yeah. believing that they need to under believing they need to smash themselves mm. with exercise or having all these beliefs running in the background or having this belief they just can never, ever achieve a certain result. That takes a long time to unwire that. Mm-hmm. And I think just having delicate you know, slow implements makes mean, means it will last. You know, mm. I think this is where the yo-yo approach comes in because it's all or nothing, you know, yep. hard and fast, on or off, and then they feel yep. like shit. And I think it's it's not often the overeating or the lack of movement. That's the problem. It's the, it's the shame and the guilt. Mm. It's the feelings of depression that they can't ever achieve anything or they falling off the wagon and they're a terrible person. It's mm. just like it's, it, we need to go about things far slower. But you know what the other thing as well is, Phoebe, um, It's not just the physical habits and the physical routines. It's Mm. the psychological ones as Mm. well. You know, if you, if you have a lifetime of ingrained negative thoughts and negative thought processes Mm. of, you know, I'm not good enough. I can't do it. Um, it's too difficult. I'll never get better at it. You know, those sorts of negative thought processes, you, once again, you can't, it doesn't, it doesn't flip, mm, right? No. It's a, it's, it's, it's almost like you have to habit stack psychological habits mm. just as patiently as you stack physical habits. Yes. I'm sure you see that a lot. Oh, and it takes courage. Like, you know, I think we, we talk about, and I see it all over the gram and we can speak about it now. We just need to become aware of our thoughts and, and sit with them, but it takes fucking courage it's hard. to, to sit with it something that you feel emotionally yeah. uh, and when your body is wanting to do something, for example, mm-hmm. it's been conditioned to, you know, go and buy KFC every day and, and it's wanting that because you've fed that habit for so freaking long. Mm-hmm. You now have to uncondition that and do something different. So sitting with that and being like, I know this doesn't serve me, mm-hmm. um, that takes co- like courage and um, and strength, but you, you can change it and you can move it. Like you said, like moving into something different. So rather than doing that action, what else can you do instead? Mm-hmm. And and that's that could be a really small, you know, um, tweak of, of the habit to, to create a new one. Now you're in a different line with a different path, which mm-hmm. I think is freaking inspiring. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know what the thing is as well is um, you, you, uh, no matter how good you get at it, and, you know, I'm, I'm similar to you, like I've been doing a lot of psychological and mindset work for, you know, mm. probably over 10 years now. Um, and I consider myself pretty emotionally intelligent, mm. but there's still times where I just absolutely lose it. You know, mm. just absolutely, you know, it's just <laughs> like I had, I'll be honest with you last week, mm. you know, I was dealing, dealing with a whole bunch of different issues um, business related, uh, you know, just a whole lot of different things on my plate. And I just got to a point where my mindset and my thoughts were so negative Yeah, and I just, I could not get out of it. It took me two days. Mm -hmm. It literally took me two days Mm -hmm. to sit back from the thoughts, let them do what they needed to do and not get caught up in them Yeah, and not let them snowball 
to the point where it was just negative self-talk bullshit. Yeah. You know? And good and the, it was and, only two days, that's pretty good. Sometimes it's freaking weeks. Right? I was like, I would <laughs> know. I was like, man, this is like this is the you know, well it's, oh. it was two and a half days yeah. really is how long it took. So, you know, I think the 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 one thing, especially if you're new to these sorts of techniques and you're, you know, you're you're interested in in the psychology of mm. um mindset and and thoughts and really mindfulness is kind of what we're talking about here. Definitely. You know, understand that it's not something that you kind of set and forget Mm. it's something that you you know you work on continuously and you know even someone like myself that's had you know probably close to if not more than 10 years experience with it i still have slip ups oh yeah where i'm still like human man. days man human like, 100% just having a human 100%. i had a human week last week where i just felt like shit and i just yeah. I, that i had to work with myself and I was coaching myself. Yeah. I was like, just keep going. Yeah. Just keep, make it to the next hour, mm. make it to the next hour. And mm. it's like, a, it's like that sometimes it's because we're fucking humans. Like we, we have to exist here on this really harsh earth yeah. and you know, we have things coming at us and it's sort of like, once we have one learning, mm-hmm. you know, if you're, if you're in the personal development realm and you have some learnings about yourself or maybe, you know, you're, you're looking at your, your, your I don't know, your egoic state in a different way and you've got some new learnings coming in your way and you're asking yourself some really interesting questions about, you know, where this is in me, um, that can take a, like, that's a freaking blow, man. Mm. That's really hard to sit with yourself. And, and anyway, so yeah, I think just knowing that, like you said, we're all humans, like yeah. we're doing the best yeah. we can. And, and I think really yeah. the, the take home is, you know, it, it's a process, Yeah. you know, it's, it really is a process and just be kind with yourself through it because it is really like, it's difficult. Mm-hmm. It's hard. Shit's not easy. That's Me? why a lot of people don't do it nah, man. because it's really difficult to kind of sit back from your thoughts. It can be extremely uncomfortable. Easier to just blame 100%. and be a victim. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And that is perfect because that's the next thing that I want to talk to you about mm. is this accountability, responsibility, um, you know, getting out of this uh, blame game, getting out of this finger pointing, getting out of... Uh, you know, the victim mentality mindset. Yeah. And you did mention that, you know, as well um, off camera before we were talking a little bit where you were just like, you know, you got to a point where you were like, I need to take responsibility mm. for, you know, my actions, for my thoughts, for, you know, I can't blame other people for this. I need to really own it, mm. uh, you know, and, and, and just turn up, turn up the responsibility and the accountability factor. Yeah, and talk, I love that. Talk a little bit about that. I think that's so empowering that we're all in charge of our own life and our own existence. So knowing that I'm running a show, that gives me far more empowering feelings um, that I can actually change things. And that makes things really hard because it's all up to me now. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's better that I, I'm thinking in that way rather than, you know, finger pointing. And I think as humans, man, we, we're still going to finger point every now and again because mm. it's far more easier, right? Mm-hmm. But um, then, then it comes back to those quiet, quiet moments within yourself and you're like, where, where do I need to learn from this? This is all happening for a reason. Um, where, where do I need to – what's the learning here, you know? So – you know, I, I think, yeah, that's what I, I love what I do because teaching my clients that they're actually in charge of their own life. They're mm-hmm. in charge of their own choices and that brings you empowerment. Um, and yeah, it's fucking hard, but like it's better to own it and um, take responsibility than be a little bitch and think the world's happening to you. Um, and rather than, you know, like I think it's just too easy finger pointing um, mm-hmm. and, and sitting back and, and blaming people, but doesn't take you anywhere. Mm. It's one of the the real fundamental aspects of of personal development. Mm. And you know, if there's nothing else that that you guys take from this episode of Fitness Times Business, I think that this is really the this is the core of it all. Mm. Is this concept of extreme ownership. This concept of, you know what, if you have made the decision that you want to level up, right? You can't continue to blame other people or other situations or Mm. the world or the universe or whatever the fuck else you want to point a finger at. Mm -hmm. It's all on you. Absolutely. Right? It's all on you. And I work with some clients who are the epitome of inspiration for me because they are single moms. Maybe they've got some health conditions. They've got kids. Mm -hmm. They're, you know, studying. They're working. And... 
and they're just getting on with it. They're, they're, and they're, they're actually in quite a good mind about it too because they, they can see the end goal and they can see that they can either, you know, they can suffer and they can finger point and they can talk about all the things that are going wrong for their life or they can actually be inspired and they can actually, you know, look how fruitful their life is because of their actions and look how happy mm. their children are and like look what they're learning and 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 I just think that's inspiring mm. um because they of their mindset they are choosing to think in a different way rather than um you know the opposite which is fucking awesome <laughs> yeah and I think it's you know it, 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 the reason why I say it's fundamental is mm. because not only does it not only does it liberate I think to a to a certain degree where mm. It's uncomfortable to do to to really kind of get to the point where you where it is extreme ownership where you are a hundred percent accountable for everything. You are a hundred percent even you know it's it's a saying that I that I use quite often is um, only good things happen for me. Mm. You know, there's so there's so many things that happen that you can perceive as being something that happens to you mm -hmm. or something that happens for you, and you can perceive as being something bad or something good yeah and so many people are in the mindset of only bad things happen to me oh yeah that's all you, they see <laughs> you gotta flip that shit mm -hmm. you gotta flip that shit to yeah. only good things happen for me absolutely and i think once you can kind of get to that point where you can frame everything as something that you are responsible for dealing with something that you are 100 percent accountable for for your own personal development it just opens up the floodgates mm -hmm. for you to be able to do anything you want. Mm. The catch is it's really fucking hard. Yeah, it's painful, man. <laughs> the catch is as soon as you take the finger that you're pointing at whatever or whoever mm. and you figure out that when you point the finger, there's three fingers pointing back at you. True that. That is really uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. But the, the, the quicker you can confront that situation – and the quicker you can come to the understanding that that is the actual reality, mm -hmm. the easier it is to start taking control of whatever it is that you're trying to achieve and whatever area of your life you're trying to level up mm -hmm. and actually start working towards it. Love it. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Definitely. I want to round this, uh, this episode of Fitness Times Business out mm -hmm. um, with, with something else that you and I have spoken about. And it's this, it kind of ties in a little bit to accountability or responsibility. Um, it's this concept of getting what you think you deserve and getting what you've earned. Mm. Mm -hmm. Where do you, where do you sit on that? Yeah. Um, well, yeah, we spoke about it off, off camera, but mm. I, yeah. And it's just, it's a really interesting conversation. I mean, I, I definitely, I'm in the space where, I mean, I've definitely been in both, you know, I've definitely been yeah. in a deserving space where I felt like I've deserved things, but mm -hmm. you know, where I am now, I really love and I'm very passionate about what I do and the work that I put in. And I know that I have earned what I have. Mm -hmm. I've put in the work and the hours um, to get where I am. And there's more to come because I'm still putting in the work and the hours because I want more for myself. And that, um, you know, that's leveling up and that's, that's doing the work. I, I really don't feel like I deserve anything. I'm just putting in the reps to get to where I want to go. Like, yeah. I think that's a really good space to be because I feel like as soon as I start thinking deserving, I start, I think, wouldn't that become lazy or complacent or sitting back and thinking that I reap the rewards rather than keeping on pushing forward. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I'm very, uh, I put the pressure on myself a lot because I, I want I want more for myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. I, I tend to agree personally, and th there's no right or wrong answer to this, this, uh, mm. this question or this kind of scenario. I think that, you know, a lot of people when they, you know, um, err towards the sign of, uh, towards the side of deserve, you know, I get what I think I deserve is it starts to kind of blur the lines with entitlement a little bit. Mm -hmm. And you're right. Entitlement starts to breed a little bit of complacency. It starts to breed a little bit of, you know, if you're not standing still, you start moving backwards a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I'm similar to you as I kind of go, you know what? I, I, you know, I'm kind of extreme on it. I'm kind of like, I don't really deserve anything. Mm. Um, I get what I earn, you know, and I'm happy to do the work. I'm happy to earn my keep. I'm happy to earn everything. Mm. That's just kind of my default setting. The problem is, and this is going to be a little bit difficult. Mm. The problem is you can get into this 
cycle, and this is this is something that I really struggle with personally, you can get into the cycle of not feeling like you deserve anything mm. and you're consistently trying to earn. You're mm. consistently trying to move forward. You're consistently climbing each step on yeah. a staircase that never ends. How do you kind of... I guess balance because you're very you're very big with mindfulness, right? That's that's one of the things about you that's quite unique is you're very big about living in the present, you know, um, you know, taking time to smell the roses, mm. uh, you know, th- that kind of that doesn't sit very well with earn everything. Totally. And I mean that's it's a there's a pro and a con to everything and mm. so I think with with the the similarity that we both have in terms of where we want to go and our achievement and our desire for success and wanting more for ourselves. Yeah. Um, the negative here is that um, I really struggle sometimes to stop and smell the roses and mm-hmm. I really need to be pulled up sometimes to stop and appreciate what I've already got. Um, when it comes to me winning titles or achieving certain successes in my business, um, you know, often enough, I'm hungry for the next thing. What's mm-hmm. next? What's next? What's bigger? Mm-hmm. Rather than stopping and looking at this amazing view that I've created for myself and admiring what I've done and the, the mountain that I've climbed, I'm still seeing what else is next. So, you know, it's um, it's just yeah, doing doing both. It's just that, that dance, right? <laughs> it's it, tricky, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, it's it's a it's an incredibly um, difficult balance, and I'm sure that there's a you know a few listeners that are that are relating to this as well. Mm is, you know, it, it's really tough to have that, that, you know, uh, you get what you earn type mindset, which is fantastic for development. Don't, mm. you know, don't, don't get it twisted. That is probably one of the best mindsets to make sure that you're progressing, to make sure that you, you know, you're moving forward, you're leveling up, you're achieving, um, you know, if, if that's important to you, mm. because it tends to drive that. But at the same time, it also tends to drive, never being satisfied, um, yeah. which is not a good situation to be in for, you know, overall mental health. Totally. Because, you you, you know, you, you're consistently climbing each step of the staircase yeah. that never ends, And that right? perfectionism and control run so yeah. strong in both, I guess, those characters, you know. So yeah. I'm sure it does for both of us mm. um, where, you know, yeah, it's an interesting one, but it's something we've got to practice, you know. Yeah. It's a, it's a practice like anything. Yeah. It's mm. almost one of those things that we were, we were speaking about <laughs> earlier where it's, you know, it's the same as being able to separate yourself from your thoughts. Yeah. And practicing emotional intelligence, you know. It's one of those it's really one of those kind of mindset battles that you you get better at it, mm-hmm. but it's a process. Yeah. <laughs> it's a continuous challenge. Isn't ever, it? I don't think it ever goes away though. I think yeah. it's just part of being a human when we start yeah. up to this thing. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's just something that you you know you continue to get better at, but you have to kind of continue to get better at it, or yeah. else you you default to that position yeah. um, of you know uh, never stopping to smell the roses. Mm. You had a pretty good analogy. I want you to to tell that story about mm. driving. Oh, with the speed limit that's yeah. going to stick with me next time i'm quoting traffic yeah. I'm, de- I'm definitely going to use that yeah. as a cue this was inspired by a woman i know called bronwyn kogan she's yeah. a she's a coach actually she's incredible yeah and uh so it was this uh idea that when you are you know going on a busy highway the speed limit's 100 and so, you know you're behind all these people and they're all going 80 and um you know this is a this is a teaching where you know, like rather than going up their ass and just trying to push forward, you can't do anything, bro. So you're going to have to sit down and just relax and, yeah. you know, take the gas off and, and appreciate what you got right there right now. So it could be a good reminder for you to, you know, just stop and, and look around you and think about how amazing everything is and what you've created and, mm. you know, be really proud of yourself and um, and marvel at what you've created. Because I, I think uh, often enough, like us busy people, we just kind of keep on going on that rat race, that hamster wheel, and we don't really stop and just appreciate. So, so Yeah. I'll see. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Phoebe. Thank you for having me. It's been a been a great uh, a great discussion, and you know mm-hmm. one one of the things that I really look forward to when I have guests on this podcast, um, I kind of go a little bit selfish is I try and get value for myself out of mm-hmm. it, and I think that you know I've I've learned um, a lot from you today, and mm-hmm. the different ways that you kind of approach things from a mindset perspective in particular. Cool. Um, so I just want to say thank you personally, and on behalf of the listeners and the viewers as well. Where can they find you? Where's uh, they the can, best place? Yeah, they can find me on Instagram uh, at Phoebe Coaching mm-hmm. or phoebetaylor.com.au. Yep. 
or Phoebe Taylor personal training and nutrition on Facebook. Or just Google Phoebe Taylor. Yeah, it's Google you, me. You'll come straight up. <laughs> yeah, thanks Guys, for having me. Guys, if you, uh, one of the things that I always ask of the listeners and the viewers is if they've uh, listened to this episode of Fitness Times Business and they've got value out of it, and I'm sure so many of them will have, uh, you know, <laughs> the, so many just absolute gems of, of psychological wisdom in this episode, probably more than we've ever had in any episode of Fitness oh. Times Business. So uh, I'm sure that there's a bunch of you who have got uh, immense value out of this. I ask that you guys share the podcast, you know, and you can share it person to person. Uh, next time you're having a, you know, a, a dinner with some friends or family or a coffee or whatever, and you, you know, the discussion comes up of content you've been consuming, movies you've watched, songs mm-hmm. you've listened to, podcasts you've listened to, Drop Fitness Times Business. And one thing that I, I really like seeing is, uh, is taking a screenshot right now of whatever podcasting platform you're listening to and posting it in your Instagram story. Mm -hmm. Tag myself at Joseph Mansell, tag Phoebe Coaching as well, and we'll see those those posts and we'll repost them um, to say thank you guys for, for spreading the word. Yeah. Phoebe, thank you once again. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah. You guys could have been anywhere in the world right now, but you're here with us. We appreciate that. Until next time, we'll catch you on the flip side. Thank you for tuning into this episode of the Fitness Times Business Podcast. Be sure to subscribe. And if you enjoyed listening to this episode, make sure you give us a five-star rating. Until next time, we'll catch you on the flip side.